Saturn is home to one of the most spectacular ring systems in the solar system and a ridiculously large amount of moons thanks to the recent discovery of 128 new moons in orbit around the ringed planet. That's right, 128 new moons. But how is that even possible? How have these moons been missed until now and why haven't they fallen into Saturn? When I first shared this news, you left me with lots of questions. Even I have my own questions and those questions are going to be answered in this video. So let's get into it. Okay, first question. How did astronomers discover these 128 new moons around Saturn? Well, it took years of careful observation, some clever image processing, and a bit of detective work. The team behind this discovery, led by Edward Ashton of Academia Sinica in Taiwan, used the Canada-France-Hawaii telescope to scan Saturn's surroundings. But spotting tiny, faint moons orbiting a massive planet is not as simple as pointing a telescope and taking a picture. Now, the first clues for the existence of these 128 new moons came between 2019 and 2021, when astronomers identified 62 new objects around Saturn. But they also noticed smaller, fainter objects that couldn't immediately be confirmed as moons. This hinted that there were even more out there waiting to be found. And with those initial hints in mind, the researchers returned in 2023 and observed the same areas of the sky for three consecutive months with the goal of tracking those faint objects to confirm whether they were actually orbiting Saturn. Now here's where things get really cool. Instead of looking for these moons in individual images, astronomers used a method called shift and stack. Here's how it works. Imagine trying to follow a tiny firefly in a dark field. It's barely visible in a single snapshot, but if you take multiple photos and shift them so that they align with the firefly's movement, its light adds up, making it easier to see. That's exactly what they did with these moons, stacking multiple images along their predicted orbits to bring out signals that were too faint to detect otherwise. Once these new moons were confirmed, they were officially recognized by the International Astronomical Union, bringing Saturn's moon count to a whopping 274 moons in total. But here's what blows my mind the most. Many of these moons were actually visible in past observations dating as far back as 2004. They just hadn't been properly identified until now. Next question, what are their names? All right, so we've got 128 new moons. Do they all have cool names like Titan or Enceladus? Not yet. For now, each of these moons has been given a provisional designation, which is just a string of numbers and letters. For example, S slash 2020 S 27. Not exactly catchy, but that's the standard practice when a new moon is discovered. Now, if they do, when do they get their real names? Eventually, most significant moons will receive official names and the International Astronomical Union, or the IAU, is in charge of that process. Now, the astronomers who discovered these moons, led by Edward Ashton, will get to propose names which the IAU will review before making them official. Unfortunately, though, they can't just name them anything they like. Saturn's moons do follow a mythological naming system. Large regular moons, like Titan, are named after well, titans and other figures from Roman and Greek mythology. But these 128 new moons belong to the irregular category of moons, which means their names will come from Norse mythology, just like other moons in the Norse group. So if you've ever heard of Sturt, Bergelmir or Skoll, you're about to. <laughs> Astronomers are going to need dozens of obscure Viking deities to name these moons. With so many new moons, there's some discussion about whether the naming rules might need to change, and Dr. Ashton even suggested that the IAU may eventually have to relax the criteria or expand the naming system to include even more mythologies. According to the IAU's rules, the moons smaller than three kilometers across might only get names if they have particular scientific significance. Which brings me to the next question. How big are these moons? In a word, tiny. These aren't big round moons like Titan or Enceladus. These are blobby, 
potato-shaped moonlets just a few kilometers across. Now, why potato shaped? Well, that comes down to something called the potato radius, which is the size limit where an object is big enough for its own gravity to start pulling it into a spherical shape. That transition typically happens at around 200 to 300 kilometers in radius. Anything smaller than that doesn't have enough gravity to smooth itself out, so it stays lumpy and irregular, hence potato shaped. More specifically, most of these newly discovered moons are between three to five kilometers in diameter about the size of a small town. So extremely potato-like and not even close to being able to be around at all. Which again brings me to my next question. Do captured asteroids count as moons? As you would probably guess from what I just said, yes. In fact, most of Saturn's newly found moons are captured objects, likely asteroids or leftover planetesimals from the early solar system. These fall into the category of irregular moons, which have wide, tilted, and often elliptical orbits. In contrast, regular moons formed with the planet and usually have neat circular orbits around the equator. So a captured asteroid can be a moon, but what about all the little particles in orbit around Saturn in its rings? Well, this is where things get murky. Saturn's rings contain trillions of tiny icy chunks, some as small as a grain of sand, others the size of houses. So at what point does a chunk of ice in the rings stop being a ring particle and start being a moon? The answer, unfortunately, we don't really know. Right now, the distinction is mostly size and independence. Moons are big enough and separate enough to be tracked individually, while ring particles are part of a broader structure. But as we keep discovering smaller and smaller moons, we're forced to ask, where do we draw the line here? For something so common in our solar system, you'd think we have a firm definition of what a moon actually is, right? Well, we don't. Unlike planets, where the International Astronomical Union has a very strong opinion on what counts, sorry Pluto, there's no official definition of a moon. Thankfully though, NASA has a relatively simple definition, that is a naturally formed body that orbits a planet is called a moon. That's it. Next question, this time without a clever segue, but we're just going to go right into it. Why does Saturn have so many moons? Saturn isn't just the Lord of the Rings, it's also the undisputed moon champion of the solar system with a staggering 274 confirmed moons and possibly counting. That's more than all the other planets combined. But why does Saturn have so many moons compared to say Earth which only has one lonely companion? The answer comes down to gravity, collisions and a little bit of observational luck. Firstly, Saturn is a master of gravitational capture. During the early solar system's chaotic youth, countless small objects called planetesimals zipped around the sun. Giant planets like Saturn, with their immense gravity, acted like cosmic vacuum cleaners, pulling in anything that got too close. Many of Saturn's irregular moons are thought to have been captured asteroids or planetesimals that wandered too near and got trapped in its gravitational embrace. Now, the 128 new moons discovered recently are all irregular, supporting this idea. Second, collisions create even more moons. Space is violent. Once objects are captured, they don't always stay in one piece. Saturn's small, blobby, potato-like moons suggest a long history of cosmic collisions, either between captured objects or with existing moons and passing comets, for example. Every major impact could shatter a moon into multiple smaller pieces, creating new moons in the process. Scientists even suspect that a massive collision within the last 100 million years may explain why so many of Saturn's irregular moons appear to be clumped together, because they could potentially be remnants of a once larger moon that was just obliterated. And third, not all moons form the same way. Saturn's moons fall into two major categories. Regular moons, of which there are 24 known, likely formed alongside Saturn from a swirling disk of gas and dust. They have circular orbits that align with a Saturn's equator. 
Think Titan, Enceladus, and Mimas, classic moons that grew up with the planet. Then there are the irregular moons, with now more than 250 known. These are captured wanderers. They have tilted, stretched out orbits, and many even orbit backwards, i.e. retrograde. The newly discovered 128 moons mostly belong to the Norse group, known for their retrograde orbits. And finally, we're just getting better at finding moons. Saturn always had this many moons, we just couldn't see them until now. Recent advances in telescope technology and data analysis have revolutionized our ability to detect tiny, faint moons. And there's this shift and stack technique. It's used with telescopes like the Canada-France-Hawaii telescope, and this technique has been a game changer for finding more and more and more moons. By combining multiple long exposure images, astronomers can track incredibly faint objects moving around Saturn. On to the next question, probably the most obvious next question. How were these moons missed for so long? For centuries, Saturn's moons have been discovered gradually, starting with Titan in 1655 and continuing as telescopes improved. But the new 128 moons? They were hiding in plain sight, just too faint to see with older methods. Again, most of these moons are only a few kilometers across, making them incredibly dim and hard to see. And they also follow irregular, distant, and sometimes highly tilted orbits, meaning they don't move in neat, predictable paths like Saturn's larger moons that orbit around the equator of the planet. That made them tricky to track, especially with traditional telescopes. It wasn't that these moons weren't there, it was just that we didn't have the right tools to see them. Or we just ignored them because that's not what we were looking for until now. But what if Saturn isn't really the moon king of the solar system? What if we've just double counted some of these moons and its total moon count is actually lower? Good question. With so many tiny moons being tracked, you'd think there'd be a risk of counting the same ones twice. But astronomers are incredibly careful about this. Every potential new moon goes through a long confirmation process. First, it's spotted using powerful telescopes and the shift and stack technique. Then, astronomers track its movement over months or even years to precisely determine its orbit. If it turns out to match an already known moon, it's just a re-observation, not a new discovery. To be sure they're actually finding new moons, researchers compare their data with past surveys, linking some moons all the way back to older observations that weren't conclusive at the time. That's why some of these new moons were technically seen years ago, but we only now have confirmed orbits. Once a moon's path is locked in and doesn't match any previously recorded moons, it's officially recognized. So while the numbers are going up, double counting isn't really a concern. It's just that our ability to spot and confirm these tiny moons has gotten way better. Now, 274 moons around a single planet is insane and leads to the next question. Is there a limit for how many moons a planet can theoretically have? That's a great question. Technically, yes, there seems to be an upper limit to how many moons we can currently detect around a planet like Saturn, but that exact number is kind of tricky to pin down. There's also an ambiguity in what we actually consider a moon. For example, Saturn's rings contain over 150 small objects that are technically moonlets because of the way they interact with the rings, but classifying them as moons is still up for debate. If we're only looking for moons with specific definitions, even when none exist, like objects that are large enough to be called moons, there's likely an upper limit on what we can detect with the current technology. But again, we kind of just need a, a definition for what a moon is, then we probably would be better off, I don't know. And I've kept my favorite question for last, were there any moon moons? Firstly, if this is your first time coming across the term moon moon, let me dispel your confusion. A moon moon is simply a moon of a moon. So moons orbit around planets and moon moons orbit around moons. They are moons of moons. Unfortunately, no moon moons were found in this investigation. Although that doesn't mean that Saturn can't have moon moons. In fact, this paper where I first learned about the term moon moons suggests that Saturn can indeed host a moon moon if that moon moon is a moon moon of the moon Titan.
And I think that's everything you wanted to know about these new moons around Saturn. So until next time, stay curious and keep looking up, especially at Saturn.